talking with Roger Newton at Aspirion Therapeutics. Roger, what's next for Aspirion in its clinical development? Well, we, uh, we filed an IND on our lead compound, ETC-1002, uh, that about three weeks ago. And uh, there's a waiting period that you have to wait about a month to hear back from the agency, and then you can start moving into your, uh, your, uh, your clinicals. It's, uh, it's basically a safety, it's a single-dose tolerance study that you, you do in, uh, in healthy volunteers to evaluate uh, the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of, of the compound. So we're excited. We're two months early in, uh, in the effort to file the IND. So we had a big celebration three weeks ago about uh, the filing of the application and uh, recognizing all the people here at Asperion as well as our consultants and, and, um, and contractors who helped us. Roger, you've said that you want to accomplish getting an HDL therapy on the market with this company. And, uh, you know, wh why is that so important to you? Well, we didn't get to finish that in the first Asperion, and so one of the reasons I'm back in the saddle here doing this uh, with some really talented people is uh, I believe that the, uh, the synthetic HDL strategies have, uh, have merit in being able to inhibit progression as well as cause, and more importantly, cause regression of atherosclerosis and, and stabilize unstable plaques that actually cause heart attacks and strokes in, in, in many people. And oftentimes these, uh, these, these, uh, these plaques that rupture are undiagnosed. And in thinking that you can have drugs like uh, Lipitor and perhaps even uh, pill-in-the-bottle drugs that affect HDL, the good cholesterol particles, um, that's all well and good. But in, in a subacute treatment, uh, such as in acute coronary syndrome patients, having HDL therapy would be very effective at potentially stabilizing unstable plaques and, and preventing um, cardiovascular events like strokes and heart attacks. What role do you think the life sciences industry can play in helping Michigan recover from its economic crisis? Well, I think it's already showing it. I, I think there's a, um, I think it's clear that, that there are a number of companies, it's not just pharmaceutical or biotech companies that are trying to treat disease, it's also medical devices. I think there's biofuels, there's bioengineering. Uh, there's a whole plethora of opportunity here in Michigan. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of research dollars, basic research dollars that can be uh, translated into uh, a commercial opportunity. I think uh, with the Innovation Center here, the Michigan Life Science and Innovation Center here in Plymouth, plus the uh, North Campus Research Complex at the University of Michigan, uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, I think the sky's the limit. Great opportunity, great scientists. We need a little more funding and we need some more executive leadership, I think. But overall, I think there's a, it's a very, very bright future here. And at the facility in Plymouth, you have Lysera and Valesco Pharmaceuticals. But what's next for this facility? Um, I think the, uh, you know, we have a few more labs that we have to fill. It's about 60% full as, as a, uh, a, a 60,000, 58,000 square feet uh, complex. Uh, there's some more administrative uh, uh, offices that need to be filled. Uh, but we're on, uh, we're on a pretty fast track within a year and a half, I think, to be probably 80% full. And that, uh, that, that would be great. 